Hey, in this very short and simple Pico 8 tutorial, we're going to learn how to toggle things. This is one of those little building blocks in a game that is so, so useful. Here's pretty much how it works. If I hit the X key on my keyboard, it opens the door. If I hit it again, it closes the door. And that's pretty much it. You can see how this would be a very useful thing in pretty much any game. And the idea is that you can take these principles here and just plug this into whatever game you're working on in Pico 8. And the basic ideas here work for any engine as well. So let's jump into the code. This is pretty simple. I mean, all of the code really lives on one screen. As usual, we have our three callbacks here for Pico 8, our init. Everything in here runs once as soon as the game runs. We have our update, which runs every frame, and our draw, which runs every frame after update. The very first thing that we're doing is we're making a table. The table's name is door. So it's a variable called door, which contains a table and the table contains a bunch of properties. For what we're doing here, we just have this one property for Sprite. So SP is just short for Sprite. It could be anything. You could say dog, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to call it, SP equals one. Now, why does it equal one? Well, SP is going to be the property that we use to draw our Sprite. And what we're going to use for it is a Sprite number. If we go over to our Sprite sheet here, we have a couple of Sprites. The first one is a closed door, and that's sprite one. And then we have an open door, which is sprite two. Now, in our update function, the one that runs every single frame, every frame we're going to check if we just pressed a button. What button? X. And if we press the X button, then we're going to test something else. We're going to test what the value of the sprite in the door table is. If it's one, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch that sprite to be the value of two. If it's not one, in this case, it would probably be two, but if it's anything except for one, we're going to switch it to be one. And so basically when we hit X, it's either going to go from one to two or two to one, depending on what it actually is already. Now, this doesn't actually do anything that we can see. All it's doing is changing this variable right here. Then what we're doing when we draw each frame is we're clearing the screen and then we're drawing a sprite and this first argument here is the sprite number. Normally we could just put one or two or three or whatever here, but instead we're doing this variable door.sp, which is gonna call this number right here. And we're gonna put it sort of in the middle, which is 63 comma 63. And so every frame it's going to draw whatever the sprite number is at 63, 63. And that's how, save run, we get this door. And when we hit X, it opens the door. When we hit X again, it closes the door. Now let's make this a little bit more interesting. Let's add another property here. So let's say maybe we want to lock the door. We want to use a key or something like that. We could say comma, and we'll just say locked equals true. Now we have this property and we're going to start with it locked. Then we can test whether this is locked or not. So when we press X, we could say something like if door dot locked, then we could play a sound maybe. Let's just say if X one else, we're going to do all of this. Okay. Let's also make sure we end this if. I like to label my ends because it's really hard to figure out which one's which sometimes. So now, if it's locked, we're going to play a sound effect. And if it's not locked, we're going to open the door. So this is locked. And so if I hit save and then run and I hit X, it's not going to work because it's locked. Okay. In fact, we should have it play a sound effect. Let's go to our sounds here. There we go. Save run. This is actually sound effect zero. So we'll turn this to sound effect zero. Save run. Ah, oh, man. So how do we unlock the door? Well, we could use a key or something like that, but what we need is some kind of code that'll actually unlock the door first. And then we can kind of use whatever method we want to make that work. So let's just uh, make that a button press for now, just because we're testing things out. If button P, the circle button, then door.locked equals false. All right. Save run. So here we go, X. Then we'll hit the circle button, which is actually Z on the keyboard. So I'm unlocked it, and now I can open it. Ooh, yeah. Let's get some feedback when we do that. Let's make a sound effect one for unlock it. And so sound effect one is going to be the unlock sound, like bloop, a little faster than that, huh? Yeah, that's nice. Boop, boop. Save run. So now we unlock it, and, and we open it like that. Let's have a victory sound. Let's do it. Yay. Save run. Let's do sound effects two here. Once we unlock the door, so we go, yay, we did it. That's so satisfying. Just a little door. So cool. So this is pretty basic stuff, but man, it is so useful. This is the kind of really fun stuff that I just love about video games. And hey, if you're new to Pico 8, there is a great free workshop where you can learn the basics right there. And I hope this is helpful. If you want more videos like this, let me know in the comments and we'll make some more little kind of building block videos. 
Okay, thanks for stopping by.